Hey there, how you doing? I wanna have a chat to you today about leadership. Uh, I'm sure you've all uh, seen, experienced uh, amazing uh, leadership in your time, uh, people that you hold very uh, dear to you, um, that you're still in contact with, people who have been uh, exemplary leaders uh, to you over time. I'm sure you've also witnessed, sadly, have some bad examples of leadership and probably have a, a number of things that um, you would do differently having seen other people make mistakes in leadership. So I'm wanting to have a chat to you today about uh, leadership. And uh, our lecture reading today is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. And it's the account that only Luke records of uh, the two on the road to Emmaus. Uh, and the risen Lord Jesus, uh, following his resurrection from the dead, uh, kind of sidles up alongside them. And they don't recognize who it is because they are so downcast. They're so disappointed. And we find out that their disappointed disappointment is linked to um, failures in leadership. Uh, and this operates at, at two levels that I can see here. Uh, first of all, is uh, their hopes that Jesus was going to be the one to uh, redeem Israel in verse 21. And in these two words, there's a whole bunch of hopes and expectations uh, gathered from the Old Testament scriptures about what would happen to the nation of Israel uh, when the rescuer figure, the Messiah, would come. Uh, all sorts of hopes of um, uh, the foreign enemies, uh, pagan Rome being kicked out and the nation's fortunes being restored once and for all and the glory days returning. Uh, obviously, this uh, isn't the way that things happened and, and Jesus' uh, mission was taking on a much larger enemy, which I'll talk about in other, uh, in other um, talks, but not, not here today. So that's one level of disappointment. Uh, that their hopes for a restored nation um, didn't happen as the way that they expected. And also, secondly, there's disappointment in the chief priests and the leaders um, who handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. A disappointment there that the nation's leaders uh, were part of um, that process uh, where Jesus uh, was uh, killed. So there absolutely um, shattered and distraught and they don't recognize the risen Jesus alongside them. That is until they invite Jesus into their home and we're taken to a scene where they're at table and Jesus takes bread, um, he uh, blesses the bread, uh, breaks the bread and gives it to them. And in this action, which is really um, has sacramental uh, tones there, Eucharistic tones there, um, it's in this process of them receiving the bread that Jesus breaks that they finally recognize who it truly is, that it, it is Jesus, the bread of life himself, um, there right in front of them. Uh, so, and that's, so this action uh, is packed full of meaning uh, that helps uh, feed into our Eucharistic uh, theology of um, meeting with the risen Lord Jesus when we receive the bread and the wine at communion. Uh, and this is something which sadly we can't do at the minute uh, because of uh, COVID-19 and needing to stay safe in our homes and prevent the spread uh, of uh, this deadly virus. Um, this sacramental act and this meeting with God in this special way where God does um, something within our lives and within our, our hearts. Sadly, we can't do this uh, anymore. But what we do have is uh, the Bible and we have um, uh, the inspired word of God. Uh, we can read about Jesus in the pages of the Gospels as we're doing now. And Jesus himself is the bread of life. And so we can have an encounter with God uh, like the two on the road to Emmaus um, in this kind of Eucharistic act. We can have this similar encounter uh, simply by reading the words uh, of God in the Bible and in particular in the Gospels themselves. And these words can nourish and sustain us uh, throughout these difficult times. And then what happens? Um, 
They leave excited and they return uh, to the eleven disciples and they say, The Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. So the leadership that Jesus actually shows is one of uh, suffering, uh, one of showing grace and mercy to the whole world. Uh, But his rule and his reign is very different to uh, any other uh, rule and reign on the earth in that Jesus hasn't come to dominate and oppress uh, peoples. Jesus has come to give himself, to give his life, to die sacrificially on the cross, Um, his body being broken uh, for all people to come and to experience new life in him. And here we see uh, this account as a bit of an acted uh, parable, uh, really, on what God has done for people on the cross in that in the breaking of bread, they recognize uh, that it is Jesus standing there in front of them. So friends, in this season where uh, we can't uh, have communion, uh, sadly, we can still feed on uh, Jesus Christ. We can still meet with God right here in the rooms where you are uh, by reading his words on the pages of the Bible. Uh, We can read about Jesus and we can... um, meet with him and we can see clearly who God truly is, that God loves us, God is for us, God has died for us, uh, that he has come to give himself uh, as a sufficient sacrifice uh, so that we might be forgiven and that we may see him clearly and may be with him forever. So friends, may that encourage you today, Uh, may you be blessed and we'll see you again tomorrow. You take care. Bye-bye.